Hi folks, it's August 2021 and the Oscision Tate sets have finally arrived. Uh, they were first announced back in about 2015, so it's been about six years, but um, absolutely well worth the wait. They are a really beautiful model. And this is actually really significant because, believe it or not, this is the first ready-to-run Melbourne Suburban electric train ever produced in HO scale with the exception of some very high priced brass products from Train Builder. So this is really the first time that an affordable ready to run Melbourne Suburban train has been available that you don't have to build. I know there have been some pretty basic kits in the past but here it is and I say affordable $700 for a four car set it's still a lot of money, but compare that to four cars, the brass train builder set, which is nearly $3,000. So it is way cheaper. And really, the quality is still very high. These All these modern, uh, ready to run plastic models are extremely high quality and they run beautifully and yeah, there's really nothing to complain about. Um, having said that, I will complain about a couple of things, but overall, I think it's a beautiful model. Just quickly too, this has happened at a pretty interesting time in history because out there in the real world, the real preserved Tate set has just returned to the main line after an absence of 17 years. And it's kind of bizarre that I've been waiting since I was a kid for a model to be produced of a Tate set. Um, I've also been waiting since I was 13 years old for the preserved Tate train to come back and I live on the Hurstbridge line and I've always wanted to see a Tate on the Hurstbridge line um, it, it didn't happen in the on the tours in the very early 21st century that I went on um, but just this week and we're currently in uh, Melbourne's sixth COVID lockdown at the moment so I can't go very far from my home but just this week, the real Tate set did a driver training run to Hurstbridge, which I'm almost certain is the first time a Tate set has been to Hurstbridge since the sort of mid 90s. Um, and then, you know, so that was a uh, Sunday. And then on Monday, the HO scale Tate set from Oscision arrived. So after two decades of kind of waiting for both of these things to happen, they both happened 27 hours apart which is pretty remarkable, especially for someone like me. I love these trains. You might have been able to tell that from the branding of my YouTube channel. So yeah, it's it's gone from being a bit of a interest that's been hard to follow for the last two decades uh, to something that's suddenly becoming really accessible. And, and hopefully the one-to-one um, the -one scale train will return to public tours soon once we get out of uh, this COVID mess, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, it's all looking pretty good. So I pre-ordered a four car set as well as a puzzles van um, and Oscision was offering sort of two main uh, types for the standard cars. So there was ones with the, the disc wheels and uh, the with the smoking, no smoking lettering removed which was their sort of later uh, appearance and then the kind of uh, 70s appearance of with the spoked wheels and still with the smoking non-smoking signs. Um, in reality the changing from spoke wheels to disc wheels didn't happen at the same time and a lot of cars had a mixture of both even within the same car let alone across an entire set so um, I actually uh, went halves with a friend who also ordered a four car set we got one spoke one disc and we've swapped a few cars around so we've got a bit of a mixture so you might notice that my four car set is not quite the same as everybody else's. So, um, yeah, look, overall, really impressive model. There are a few tiny things that I want to pick on just for completeness, but um, overall, I'm really impressed. Uh, one of the first things I want to say is that the um, it's really fantastic. They've provided a decal sheet for different destination boards, um, which I know is something, was something that everybody was worried about, whether or not they'd be able to put their favorite destination on the front of the cars. Um, so yeah, really good. They have provided a destination sheet. Um, however, uh, I'm going to pick up that it's a little bit limited. It's really not the full list of possible destinations. Um, they've basically just provided uh, what were the 
end of electrification terminuses um, in that era. So they've sort of missed all of the intermediate terminating locations. So just as an example for the Hurstbridge line, they've provided Hurstbridge, but they've missed you know, Eltham, McLeod, Heidelberg, other places that actually appeared on the destination boards all the time. So uh, a little bit annoying, but uh, it's not the end of the world. I'm sure somebody can make another version of this. Decal sheets are not particularly expensive or difficult to produce. So uh, who knows, maybe somebody's already done it out there and I just haven't looked. I will say when you put these decals on, make sure you trim them really exactly to the edge of the black because it's slightly bigger and it won't drop right down into the, uh, the recess there. Uh, and slightly smaller and you'll get uh, light appearing around the edge um, so yeah just be a bit careful with that luckily they've provided two of each so you can afford to stuff one up uh, which I certainly did um, talking about the lights they've provided really nice warm looking LEDs which are great um, the Desto box lights up which looks fantastic the headlight obviously you've got your two red tail lights and then there are the three white marker lights which uh, are not really marker lights as we know them today. They were actually uh, used as route indicators back in the day. So um, uh, there was basically a, a code for um, different destinations and uh, which required different combinations of those marker lights. And that was in conjunction with the colored discs which were also mounted on the front of the train. So the trains carried the disc by day, the marker light code by night, and that showed uh, basically signal as uh, where the train was supposed to be going. So something that's really good, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, is they've made it so that you can individually turn on and off every one of those three marker lights. So when you get the model out of the box, they're all turned on, but you can individually switch them out to uh, provide the, um, the code that you want. And I've actually made a video explaining these disc and light codes in more detail, so have a look at that if you're interested. It is worth noting that in real life, uh, they use the discs in the day and the lights at night, uh, not both at the same time. So it's not technically correct to have the lights and the disc on at the same time, but you know, that's just a, a little bit of modeler's license there. And that's actually often what they do with the real preserve set anyway so it's not completely unprecedented so with the discs they've provided these little etched discs and you can see there are four different patterns um and they've provided a duplicate of it in case you want to have the same one on each end of the train uh, each one of those discs can be mounted at two different angles um, so it's actually eight different aspects um, and on the real ones it's actually two discs which are double-sided, which can be mounted at two angles, which creates the eight aspects. Anyway, you have to glue these on to the front. There's no other real way of attaching them. Uh, it is a bit fiddly and you really want to get it right the first time. And obviously you want to decide pretty carefully which one you want to use because it's going to be pretty difficult to change. So yeah, you know, pick your favorite destination, plonk it on the front, look up the correct light and disc code, and um, you've got yourself a pretty nice setup. So I chose to put the red X on both ends of my standard set, which is the Hurstbridge line disc, and I put Hurstbridge and Princess Bridge on either end of the train, with just the uh, fireman side uh, marker light on, which is the code for the Hurstbridge line. And then on my parcels van, I've put the uh, the black stripes with the centre marker light, which is the the Epping line code at the time. You might be wondering about the destination board on the parcels van. On the real ones, it was just painted on, I think. It just says parcels van, so um, that would never changed. Um, so it does mean if you choose a disc for this, you can change the marker lights for other destinations that use the same disc, because each disc was uh, used for multiple locations. So uh, it actually gives you a bit more flexibility. Uh, for some strange reason, um, the casting on the, the front of the uh, parcels van is a bit different to on the standard M car. They've made like a little flat circular spot where you put the disc, kind of like a little dummy uh, disc there. Um, whereas on the standard M cars, they've put a disc bracket, which is what it really looks like in real life when there's no uh, no disc on it. Uh, I'm not quite sure why they've had this difference, and it makes it a little bit strange if you decide not to put a disc on your van. Um, but it does actually make it a little bit easier to stick the disc down because it gives you a, a flat surface to stick it to. Um, so another thing is they've provided driver and guard figures um, inside the 
the driver's compartment and guard's compartment. Uh, one thing that I think is a little bit annoying is they've only put the... So on the parcels van, they've put the driver at one end and the guard at the other end. And on the, uh, the standard set, they've put uh, the driver in one car and the guard in the other car. I should mention one of the M cars on the standard set is actually a dummy. And that's the one they've put the guard in. Um, I find this slightly annoying. I know it's very difficult to decide with a double-ended model whether you put a driver in both ends or not. Um, personally, I have a point-to-point -point layout, so my trains travel exactly 50% of the time in either direction. I think I'd prefer to just have a driver in both ends. I know this is something that Ozision has struggled with in the past, and I think their B-Class has uh, drivers in both ends, but then the L-Class only has them in one end. Um, it's pretty inconsistent. I think I'd prefer to just have one on each end. Anyway, that's probably something you can fix yourself. But yeah, it's almost like they were just expecting you to run your train in one direction, which for an EMU is obviously unrealistic. The uh, pantograph um, design that Oscision uses kind of frustrates me. You sort of have to... Releasing it is okay. You just sort of uh, twist the whole thing anti-clockwise slightly. Uh, putting it down again is actually really quite difficult. You've got to kind of twist the uh, conductor and um, get the base of it to slide under those little locking pins. Uh, it's really annoying if you just want to stable your train and whack the pantographs down, it's quite fiddly to do. Um, so it's the same design they put on the L-Class. Um, yeah, I understand that probably most people out there just leave the pantographs up all the time, so not a huge deal. Uh, also worth mentioning that apparently the pantographs are actually wired up for electrical uh, pickup, which would be great if uh, anyone out there is creating operational overhead. All the cars have sprung buffers as well, which is fantastic, um, particularly on a layout like mine where you've got a few tight spots where they definitely touch and compress. So they've also provided some dummy screw couplings that you could stick on either end of the train. Um, they're not operational and I don't think I'll do it because it'd be a bit annoying, but it'd be good if you, you just want them to, to look right and you're not planning to couple to anything. Uh, so in real life these trains had screw couplings right to the end of their lives, uh, except for the parcels vans which actually had dual screw and automatic couplings. Um, so yeah, it is uh, unrealistic for the, the red cars to have automatic couplings, but it's a pretty reasonable trade-off in terms of being able to operate them a bit more freely. Um, one thing I did notice, there's actually a few very minor paint defects on my parcels van, a few that left sort of look like smudges or paint in the wrong spot. Um, it's very minor and actually doesn't bother me in the slightest because I'm modeling the sort of you know early 1980s these vans were really beaten up by then and were covered in scratches and all sorts of things so um, if anything I think it probably adds to it for me but I can totally imagine some people would be a bit annoyed by that but um, I have no idea if that's a uh, overall production problem or if it's just on my one but as I say not a big deal. One other very small thing is obviously the cars have detailed interiors but uh, both the motor cars, both the, the actual powered one and the dummy one, uh, have a PCB board mounted uh, at sort of window height at the front of the car and the edge of it is white and it really stands out. You can see it really clearly through the windows. Um, again, be easy enough probably to open it up and just paint that black, but it seems like something they probably could have done at the factory. But uh, again, you know, we're modelers, we, uh, we make little changes ourselves to, to suit what we want, so uh, it's not, not really a huge issue. I'll probably do a little bit of weathering. I'm not brave enough to do a serious weathering job on these, but um, probably a little bit of a uh, little bit around the pantographs and horns and uh, and bogies, things like that. It's probably worth noting that in real life, by the uh, by the 1980s, these cars were really often faded and all different. Sometimes they had bits patched up and they were all different shades of red. So if you're really brave, you might want to repaint some sections of it different different shades. So I really hope that these models have been a success for Oscision because it would be really nice if um, going forward into the future they could make some of the other varieties of, of Tate car. Um, one thing you notice looking at any pictures of a real Tate set is that there's a huge amount of variety between the cars and obviously for simplicity Oscision's just created one type of car essentially. Um, same roof type, uh, you know, same window arrangement, all that sort of thing. Um, but um, if you want to create a really good looking Tate set, you need a lot more variety. Um, so fingers crossed uh, they might make some of the, uh, the elliptical roof cars and um, maybe some of the earlier uh, era cars as well. The other thing is that uh, in real life, 
uh, it is not realistic to see a tape set with all the doors closed. They almost always ran with at least some of the doors open, and often all of the doors open. So uh, if you're really brave, you might like to try opening some doors, but um, I'm definitely not willing to put a knife to these lovely models. Uh, however, I am currently building a Tate G car um, from a, uh, a cast kit, um, which I am going to make an elliptical roof version, and I'm going to make it uh, with some of the doors and windows open for a bit of variety. Um, I'll put some information about that in the video description if you're interested. So yeah, overall, uh, very impressed with these models. They're absolutely beautiful. I've been waiting for someone to make a uh, you know Melbourne Suburban train in HO scale for most of my life now. Um, and it's really exciting that uh, Oz Vision has chosen to move into this area and hopefully, I know there's been some talk about them doing a Harris set. I personally think it would be great if they did a Comenge set. I think that would be really popular and I would very much like one. Uh, and obviously they cover, a, a, you know, 40 years worth of years now as well, so probably appeal to a lot of different modelers. Uh, so yeah, fingers crossed that that might happen sometime in the future. But yeah, if you haven't ordered one of these already, you should jump on it pretty quick because they're all selling out. And um, highly recommend, fantastic model.